Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Das Science, and today I want to discuss changing bases in second quantization in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. We know from elementary quantum mechanics that a very important step in any problem is to choose a good basis in which we can write states and operators, because a good basis can greatly simplify the maths. As you may suspect, the same holds true when we use the second quantization language. So let's go. In second quantization, we can write both states and general operators in terms of creation and annihilation operators. So all we really need to be able to change bases is to figure out how these creation and annihilation operators transform. In the videos on creation and annihilation operators, which you can find linked in the description, we start with a single particle basis U, that is orthonormal, and we then define the creation and annihilation operators by their action on occupation number states. For bosons, the creation operator A UI dagger acting on Ni gives square root of Ni plus 1 and then the state with Ni plus 1, which corresponds to the addition of a boson to single particle state UI. In this expression, I am only explicitly writing the occupation number Ni that is changed by the operator and omit all the other occupation numbers that are unchanged by A UI dagger to simplify notation. In a similar way, the annihilation operator acts on Ni and gives square root of Ni times Ni minus 1, so it removes a particle from single particle state Ui. In all these expressions, we're working in the U basis, so the occupation numbers tell us that there are Ni particles in state Ui. Finally, you'll remember that these operators obey commutation relations to ensure that bosonic states are totally symmetric. For fermions, we proceed in an analogous manner. We define creation operators by their action on occupation number states, and we also define annihilation operators in a similar fashion. Fermions are subject to the Pauli exclusion principle, so we can only have a maximum of one fermion in each single particle state, so the occupation numbers are 0 or 1. This in turn means that we can directly use the single particle state labels U to describe occupation number states for fermions, and the creation operator C UI dagger acting on such a state adds a particle in state UI, which we place at the beginning of the list, and the annihilation operator removes a particle in state UI when that state is at the beginning of the list. For fermions, the creation and annihilation operators obey anti-commutation relations to ensure totally anti-symmetric states. Now all of these things should be familiar if you have been following the video series on second quantization, but if they aren't familiar then make sure that at least you check the videos on creation and annihilation operators of bosons and fermions before you proceed. If you're continuing, then to make progress in this video we consider a second single particle basis V that is again orthonormal. We then define the corresponding creation operator for bosons and the corresponding annihilation operator. Crucially, in this case the occupation numbers refer to the V basis, so that Nj is the number of particles in state Vj. We also have the creation operator for fermions, and the corresponding annihilation operator. And again the nj, which refer to the v basis in this case, can only take values of 0 or 1. The subindices in the creation and annihilation operators tell us on which basis states they are defined. So for example this u here tells us that this operator is defined by its action on occupation number state in the u basis, and this v here tells us that this operator is defined by its action on states in the v basis. Although we used n both here and here, it should always be clear which bases they refer to. So what we have here are the definitions of creation and annihilation operators in two different bases u and v. As long as we work in a single basis, then all these definitions are exactly the same for any basis. The question we want to ask in this video is what happens when we change from one basis to another. In second quantization, states and general operators are written down in terms of creation and annihilation operators. So figuring out how to change bases boils down to figuring out how the creation and annihilation operators transform between bases. To see how we transform from the U to the V basis, let's start with creation operators. The action of A UI dagger on the vacuum state gives a one particle state which we can write as UI. Similarly, the action of A VJ dagger on the vacuum state gives a one particle state which we can write as VJ. I am using the letter A here, that we typically reserve for bosons, but you should convince yourself that the exact same equations hold for the fermionic creation operators. Let's now write A VJ dagger acting on the vacuum state as equal to VJ again. 
Then we insert the identity operator. Now we write down the resolution of the identity operator in the U basis. This simply forms a bracket, which is a scalar, so we can move it to the front. And we get sum over i of the bracket ui vj times the ket ui. We can now use this relation up here to rewrite this whole expression as sum over i ui vj times the creation operator a ui dagger acting on the vacuum state. Comparing this initial expression with this final expression, we can write that a vj dagger is equal to sum over i of ui vj a ui dagger. This is the transformation rule between creation operators written in different bases u and v. This transformation rule essentially tells us that to go between the bases, what we need to calculate are these overlaps between the two sets of basis states ui, vj. As you'll remember from the video on changing bases in first quantization, this is the exact same quantity we need in that case. We can now very easily figure out how the annihilation operators transform by simply taking the adjoint of the expression for creation operators. We get a vj is equal to a vj dagger all dagger. We then substitute a vj dagger with the result up here to get this. We can now move the adjoint inside the individual sum terms. This is just a scalar, so it is equal to ui vj star, which using the conjugation property of the scalar product gives vj ui. This is simply the annihilation operator in the u basis. So putting everything together, we get this. This means that the annihilation operator a vj is equal to the sum over i of vj ui times the annihilation operator a ui. So this tells us that the annihilation operators also transform through the overlaps between the two sets of basis states. The transformation of creation and annihilation operators between different bases is all we need in second quantization because we can write both states and general operators in terms of these. In the rest of the video we'll make two sanity checks, and the first one will be to make sure that the commutation and anti-commutation relations hold in any basis. If we start with bosons, then in the U basis we have this commutation relation between the annihilation and the creation operators. Let's write the equivalent commutator for the creation and annihilation operators in the V basis. Substituting in the transformation rule for the annihilation operator up here, we get the commutator of this term. And then using the transformation rule for the creation operator up here, we get this other term. This bracket and this bracket are just the scalars, so we can take them out of the commutator and we get sum over ik of vj ui uk vl and the commutator of a ui and a uk dagger. We know that the commutator in the u basis is delta ik, so we can perform the sum over i and get sum over k vj uk uk vl. We can now move the sum over k to this point and we get sum over k of uk uk, which is simply the resolution of the identity in the u basis, so that overall we get the bracket between vj and vl. And this of course gives delta JL because the V basis is orthonormal. Therefore, if we start with the set of creation and annihilation operators in the U basis, the transform set in the V basis also obey the corresponding commutation relation. We could repeat the exact same exercise starting with the commutators between two creation or two annihilation operators in the U basis, all of which vanish, and we would also get the vanishing of the commutators in the V basis. And we could repeat the exact same exercise again for the anti-commutation relations for fermionic creation and annihilation operators, and again we would find that they hold in all bases. In the second sanity check, we'll look at the transformation of the particle number operator n that counts the total number of particles in the system. In the V basis, the total particle number operator n is equal to the sum over j of the single particle number operators n vj. In turn, this can be written out as sum over j of a vj dagger a vj. Using the transformation for the creation operator up here, we get sum over j of this term, and then using the transformation rule for the annihilation operator up here, we get this second term. We can move the creation operator here, because the term in the middle is just a scalar, and we get this. We can now move the sum over j here, and we get sum over j of the outer product of vj vj, which is simply the resolution of the identity, and this means that we get sum over i k of ui uk a ui dagger a uk. The u basis is orthonormal, 
So we end up with sum over i, a ui dagger, a ui, which in turn gives sum over i of n ui. This shows that the number operator n has the exact same form in the v basis as it does in the u basis. In turn, this means that the number of particles is conserved when we change bases, which of course should be the case. At this stage, we can play the same game with any other operator, and the corresponding transformations just follow the same derivation here because we can write any general operator in second quantization in terms of creation and annihilation operators. Changing bases in second quantization is pretty straightforward. We can write both states and general operators in terms of creation and annihilation operators, so all we really need to do is to learn how to change bases for these creation and annihilation operators. So changing bases is something you'll do constantly when doing quantum mechanics, and you can find further examples of that in the videos linked in the description. And as always, if you like the video or would like to send me suggestions for future videos, please subscribe.